What's up guys, I'm Ben from Authentech and we're back checking out the new Osmo Action from DJI. Today we'll be checking out 22 pros and cons of this new action camera and in comparison, of its direct competitor, the GoPro 7. Now, I already did a photo and video quality image comparison test between these two cameras. Make sure you check that out in case you missed it. There's some really nice things about the new Osmo, especially for that 350 price tag, but there's plenty of cons and negatives and shortcomings that a lot of other YouTubers might not be showcasing. I bought both cameras with my own money, so again, keep that in mind. Let's put a counter up on the screen and let's jump in. Right after you smash that thumbs up it helps the YouTube algorithm or something pro number one dual screens there's this front facing screen that is great for selfie mode framing up your shot when pointing back at yourself or maybe you're in a tight space and normally you would need to connect wirelessly to your phone to frame up your shot but here we can just switch to this front facing screen frame it up and then go from there. Now on the flip side of that, you can only view one screen at a time and I covered this in my last video. It sort of defeats the purpose for me. I'm on the back screen tinkering with the settings because there's no touch screen on the front and then we hit record and oh wait, I forgot to switch it. Stop recording, switch it to front record and then stop recording. Oh, I need to switch settings around, switch it to the back screen. You get the idea with this shortcoming, I'm not really finding myself using that front screen at all. Pro, micro SD card slot on the side. We don't have to open up the battery door every single time like on the GoPro. This is a huge win. Also, if we're in the case and we've snapped off that little battery door, well, you can with tight little thingies slide in there and possibly push it in. Getting the card out is a little bit more difficult, but it is possible. So I don't know if that's really considered a con, but uh, to get that card out when it's in the case is still sort of a pain. I wish they designed it so that we could easily swap out cards, pull off the footage while keeping it in the case, mounted, you get the idea. One for the pro is rock steady stabilization. Again, here's some sample clips and obviously when comparing it to the GoPro, it won an overall stabilization. But then for a con, well, it crops in a little bit too much on frame. Some people are saying it's up to 18 or 19%. This is 4K 30 stabilization off, 4K 30 stabilization on, 4K 60 stabilization off, 4K 60 stabilization on. In a perfect world, I'd say give us the option. Allow us to crop in about 10%, like on the GoPro for medium stabilization, and then allow us to crop in farther in the settings if we want for even more rock steady stabilization, but then we're losing a little bit on camera frame. Give us the option, this would be a nice feature. Another pro is HDR video. Very, very nice. Even GoPro doesn't have this. However, unfortunately, in our side-by-side side footage comparison test, well, spoiler alert, even with the HDR video on the Osmo, I still think GoPro's picture looked a little bit better, a little bit more dynamic range. As for another con, well, there's no HDR photos on the Osmo action, and this one is almost comedic because to my last point, it can record HDR video. So why wouldn't DJI give us HDR photo option? That just makes sense. A big con here, there's no HEVC on the Osmo action like we get on the GoPro. This is huge for compressing down those larger 4K video file sizes. As a small example, look at just the same 60 second video clip on the Osmo versus the GoPro. The file sizes are almost double without the HEVC. Bigger file sizes takes up more space on my hard drives. In the end, that costs me more money. Now as a pro, there's this larger screen on the back, which is really nice to have. As a con, well, the GoPro screen is actually brighter, especially outside. It's easier to see in the bright sunlight. And and with sunglasses on, I almost can't even see the Osmo Action screen. As a big pro, the Osmo is waterproof as is. No extra case needed, down to about 11 meters. And it looks and feels pretty durable. I feel like this can take a good beating. As for a big con on my list, there's no hyperlapse. Again, GoPro kills it here with good stabilization and that hyperlapse time-lapse mode. I'm really surprised we didn't see it on the Osmo Action. Hyperlapse on the Osmo Action, well, we can take time-lapse video, however, it's not using that EIS. It's not stabilizing that footage. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the Osmo's hyperlapse or time-lapse video mode without stabilization built in, which kind of stinks. It's way too shaky. As for hyperlapse on the GoPro, well, it just looks really nice. 
Again, I'm really surprised that Osmo unfortunately does not have any hyperlapse mode right now. As a big con, we're unsure of what actually works for external mic recording. Make sure you stick around as I have a lot of mic adapters third party coming in. I'm gonna test it, see if we can get it to work. Why couldn't they just give us a simple three and a half mic input? This would be so sweet to have. As another huge con, why couldn't they just give us a standard tripod mount like we find on the Yeez? These were awesome and I know I'm not alone when having that was super super helpful. To always have to pop it into its case and then adapt it to a tripod mount, it's just a little annoying. And another con, there's no live streaming right now. I personally don't do a lot of live streaming from my action camera, but a lot of people out there do. They're asking for it and it's not built in yet. As for a big pro, there's D-Warp or linear mode in both 4K 30 and 4K 60. These are better options even over the GoPro. This is really nice if you wanna remove that fish eye bended edges effect and straighten it out linear mode. For another con, well, there's limited stabilization options like in slow motion. This seems pretty basic and important to have. Another con, when I first unboxed it and I wanted to start recording, well, it looks like I had to register it through my phone's app in order to just start recording. I don't like that at all. I'm about to record my first clip and what? I have to activate with Mimo app. Are you serious? I literally can't record without doing some sort of activation. Am I missing something? Was there some way around it? Let me know down in the comments. As for a big pro, well, there's no freezing as of yet. Huge win, especially when comparing to the GoPro. We've all had so many freezing, glitching, battery draining issues. The last firmware from GoPro was in January 2019. That's four months ago. I'm not sure if GoPro is working on those glitching, freezing options, but it'd be really nice to get a firmware update soon. Another pro for the Osmo, well, they include this sweet little knob for twisting on the accessories. It's much easier to twist than these tiny little things that the GoPro includes. Another con, and this one is one of my favorites. We go to DJI.com, visit their FAQ section, and number eight, can I use HDR and Rocksteady simultaneously? No. Okay, well, thanks then. This is sort of a bummer and I touched on it in the last time. I like the HDR video quality, but if I can't turn on stabilization, what well, sort of defeats the purpose of having an action moving camera where we need stabilization. Now, of course, this is not a comprehensive, all-inclusive list. I'm gonna miss some things. You guys let me know down in the comments some other pros or cons that you found with the Osmo Action. This video is more of showing you guys what goes through my head when testing out the Osmo Action. There's lots of pros and good features and benefits of having a camera at this 350 price range, but there's also many cons and complaints. Wish items that I think GoPro might beat it out overall, possibly. Now we're all waiting on that GoPro 8. It might be a few months, so hold out. Is it gonna have a flip up or dual screen feature as well? Price on the GoPro just jumped up again, $400 on their store, but I always like to check Amazon first. And here's a great example. At the time of filming this, you can still pick up a brand new one for 365 bucks prime. Price is always fluctuating greatly on these, so just wait for one of these price drops if you're looking to pick one up. So is this a nice first temp for DJI? I'd say so. It's definitely not the best of the best yet, but for the price point, they did a good job. Also, I can't wait to see what they do next time, Gen 2, Gen 3. Look at the original Phantom. They've come so far since then, and I'm sure we're gonna see some really sweet improvements over the years. If all this does anything, well, hopefully it'll keep GoPro and others innovating and pushing the limits. Whatever happened to Yi, I have no idea. Let me know if you know down in the comments. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.